down. With you on the field, there is an order I could not push, Titan. Triple down. If you want... What is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. I hope that you're having a stellar weekend. Hey, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Ursa Furiosa exotic gauntlets for the Sentinel Titan in the Forsaken DLC. I actually had these drop after a grueling match. I played solo queuing at rank legend against a full team of legends and it didn't quite go our way. <laughs> Although, I feel like I earned them after a, um, a solid five kill round where I clutched up and soloed the whole team in Countdown, but that's neither here nor there. That footage is recorded and it may find its way onto the channel at some point, but let's talk for now about these Ursas. They are absolutely insane. I had, I had a perfect game on my second game with them with a 28.0 efficiency, and then the next match in a completely different lobby I had a 57 kill game. These things are crazy good if and only if people are silly enough to shoot you. <laughs> in uh, in comp, they're nearly worthless because people know better and they can communicate. But uh, in quick play, these things are phenomenal. It just takes uh, one guy to empty a couple of mags into your shield in order for you to be well on your way to having another super immediately or uh, shortly after you finish. The other catch is that you have to stay alive after your super runs out. So, you know, either make sure that you clear the room before your super runs out or you get to cover just before your super expires. Otherwise, if you die right after you come out of the super, you won't have time to regenerate that energy and get uh, progress towards your next super. So, so there's no doubt about it. When these things work, they are downright nasty and some players are upset about it. And I totally understand it. I don't main Titan, uh, you know, by any means. I, I play a lot of it, but I play a lot of this, uh, you know, of every subclass. I play a lot of Hunter, I play a lot of Titan, I play uh, a lot of Warlock. But let's play a little devil's advocate here. Uh, what did the player base say over and over like a broken record for a year straight after Destiny 2 launched? You know, we said our Guardians felt too weak. They tuned down our supers, they diluted the efficiency of our primary weapons, they took ammo away from our special weapons, and they made exotic perks offer little to change our gaming experience. And we got shafted with things like, you know, Kepri's Horn, the Apotheosis Veil, the Winter's Guile, the Ashen Wakes, the Aeon Swifts, etc. I mean, Sturm and Drang was an exotic and a legendary counterpart duo that at launch did nothing but reload each other. I mean, that was it. You know, we've had enough of lackluster, mediocre things to chase and use in this game. Before Forsaken launched, we were speaking up and we said things on YouTube, on the forums, on Twitter, and on Reddit about how we were ready for Bungie to break some stuff. We were ready for them to take some risks. We wanted to actually feel powerful again and Furiosas aren't entirely different from some year one Destiny 1 builds that existed. You know, you could do this on a, a gunslinger uh, with the right combination of perks and weapons. Uh, you could you could basically, um, you could get your super back in less than a minute with a well-placed Nova Bomb followed by just a couple of bad Juju kills. I had one time um, just using bad Juju. I got my super back in 30 seconds where I, I used uh, Radiance and which uh, sunsinger i used the sunsinger super i chucked nades at people and i slapped them around my super finished i got some kills with bad juju 30 seconds later i had my super ready to go you know but we didn't have a problem with it then we're just we're acclimated to a different environment now after over a year in the destiny 2 sandbox so remember there's there's always counters like running suppressor grenades or tractor cannon or burning mall all of these things are direct counters to ursas Otherwise, just wait for people to learn not to shoot the shielding titan, you know? Don't shoot the shielding sentinel, and they're completely useless. It didn't take Overwatch players long to learn to stop shooting at a shielded Zarya. You just gotta give it time. People will learn. I'll be honest, I, I missed this feeling of completely changing the way that I play the game depending on what exotic armor I have equipped. 
Forsaken brought that feeling back in some major ways. Hunters, I mean, hunters will get mad about Urses while they've got shards. And I've seen clips of people chaining three or more supers with these things. And Gwizen is shredding it out there and will only get better with the changes to Spectral Blades. Meanwhile, Warlocks get mad about how easy Blade Barrage is. You don't even have to aim at me, right? Especially with the shards on. Meanwhile, Warlocks are one hitting tanky supers with a single Nova Warp Blast and then go on their merry way with health regeneration. Meanwhile, it takes Hunters two swipes from an Arc Strider to put a down a Nova Warp. It takes two direct hits from a Dawnblade to put down a Nova Warp, but he gets to one hit kill us? Ah, oh, we're mad about it. Titans get mad about the Nova Warps ruining their fun while they've got One-Eyed Mask completely changing the way that Titans play the game in terms of their neutral game and Ursas helping them farm Blueberry Lobbies. I guess what I'm saying is that it's easy, it's really easy to moan about the other classes that you don't main, but can we can we at least appreciate the fact that we've got powerful options across the boards again? Can we appreciate, and I, I know I'm going to trigger some people when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Can, can we at least appreciate that for once we don't have a meta where hunters are so blatantly dominant in terms of their potency and overall usage in the community? And before the hunter mains get angry, just remember, I've played more hunter than probably 90% of the hunter mains watching this video have. I'm not saying they were OP. I'm not saying they needed to be nerfed. I'm saying it's cool to finally, finally look at the graphs showing subclass usage and see that the numbers are up for warlocks and titans and people are being encouraged to choose wisely what they're going to play. Comp was completely and utterly dominated by Hunter subclasses last season without any arguing. I mean, if you look at the stats and the grass, you can't in good conscience argue that point without being just obviously wrong. It's cool that there are things we're afraid of across the boards again. Hunters are powerful, Titans are powerful, Warlocks are powerful. That being said, it's healthy to talk about how some things can be reeled back a little if they need to, if they get a little out of hand. Uh, I mean, Ursa's included. Maybe maybe we'll get to the point where we're like, okay, this isn't getting any better. We, we maybe need to tune these down. Maybe we'll get there. I'm not there yet, personally. It's good to talk about uh, making other things more powerful to help them have a place. Balancing the sandbox is a necessary part of every player against player gaming experience. That only happens when we're vocal about how we feel. So please continue to be vocal. Talk about what irks you and what you love. Uh, and about what you want to love, but you can't until it gets some love, right? But as always, respect your fellow gamer and be kind to each other. You know, we're all just people passionate about gaming, and that can make us testy. So temper your passion if it leads to berating others. Keep yourselves in line, and let's help continue to refine this game that we love. Appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay, and uh, I have not played Sentinel in a long time. Not until I got these to drop, and uh, I think last time I played Sentinel before I had these drop was well before before Forsaken ever launched. I put it on for a little bit just to level up the Code of the Commander, and then I never went back to it. I, just, I haven't even. This was my first time playing Code of the Commander in PvP ever, so it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Admittedly, I had a blast running with the Ursas, and I'll probably do it again sometime. I had a really good week. I got the Ursus to drop. I had One-Eyed Mask drop. I had Heart of Inmost Light drop, which is kind of sucky. Um, I had Chromatic Fire drop. I had Controverse Holds drop. I mean, my RNG this week was was just, it was bonkers. And, um, you know, I, I have played so much of this game since Forsaken dropped, and I had not had any exotic armor drop until now. Like, <laughs> this week, it was just like, I was getting really frustrated with it, and then it was just like, okay, open up the floodgates and give them just about everything. So... I still only have Oath Keepers on my Hunter, so I need to get Gwizen, and uh, I need to get the Shards on my Hunter, and uh, I, th I think I need the Phoenix Protocol and the Geomag Stabilizers on my Warlock, and then the Antaeus Wards, and I'll have everything. So those are the things I'm currently hunting. What are you currently hunting? What do you have? What are you using? What are you loving? You know, and what do you have? What are you using? Also, what do you want? What's the what's the one thing that's evading you? You're just like, I gotta get my hands on it. Gotta have it. Um, I've had a pretty good week, so I got most of the things that I really wanted, but Gwizen is like really high on my list right now. I really want to get Gwizen because I, I love Spectral Blades. I've played so much Spectral Blades since Forsaken came out, and I want to play more of it, and I want to really experiment with the Gwizens and see what I can do with those, especially with the new changes to the subclass. So thank you so much again for watching the video, for being a part of our community. I hope to catch you in the Crucible.